Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay and with me is Aditya Lumba with the evening news. The headlines. India's GDP grows at 8.4% in the second quarter of the current fiscal. Lok Sabha witnesses introduction of two bills amid din before being adjourned for the day after repeated disruptions. Rajya Sabha Chairman M Venkai Naidu rejects opposition leader Malikarjun Kharge's appeal for revocation of suspension of 12 MPs. No case of new COVID variant Omicron reported in any part of the country says Union Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia in the Rajya Sabha. Revised guidelines for international arrivals in India in view of the new Omicron variant to be effective from tomorrow. Argentina football player Lionel Messi wins men's Ballon d'Or for record seventh time. Barcelona's Alexia Puteas bags women's Ballon d'Or. And in FIA Junior World Cup hockey, all quarterfinals to be held tomorrow at the Kalinga Stadium in Bhubaneswar. As India marches towards administering 150 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19, news about the fresh corona variants is also causing concern. In this situation, we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and also help others get vaccinated. Please follow these three simple steps: wear a face mask, maintain two meters of distance for social distancing, and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact the national helpline numbers. 0112397 and 1075 and now the news India's gross domestic product gdp for the second quarter of the current fiscal logged fastest growth among major economies in the world according to the government data released today gdp of the country grew by 8.4% from a year ago as per the national statistics office nso data manufacturing output increased 5.5% during the period while construction segment grew 7.5% in the second quarter the nso data suggests that household consumption grows in the second quarter july september of financial year 22 despite the second wave of the covid-19 pandemic boosting hopes of a quicker recovery in consumer demand in the months ahead The economy of the country has gained momentum during the quarter as demand in the economy gradually came back to normalcy after coronavirus related disruptions. The economy had contracted 7.5% in the same period last year. Chief Economic Advisor K V Subramaniam has said that India is likely to have a double digit growth this year. Briefing media Mr Subramaniam said Overall growth for the first half has been 13.7%, so even a little more than 6% growth in the subsequent quarters should be able to deliver double digit growth for this year. He said India is expected to grow at 6.5 to 7% in 2022-23 and over 7% thereafter. Mr. Subramanian said formal sector has emerged well from the COVID crisis. He said in formal sector even though it's been impacted the nature of its production means that it will be less impacted the ca said financial sector is much stronger and manufacturing sector shows that india in this decade should grow he said the cumulative annual growth rate between 2015 and 2019 has been higher for india than china in manufacturing gross value merchandise exports and manufactured good goods exports mr subramanian said fiscal deficit target of 6.8% of gdp for the current financial year is likely to be met the lok sabha today witnessed the introduction of two bills amid din and phase 2 adjournments before it was finally adjourned for the day however the rajya sabha resumed its normal business without any adjournment when the lok sabha met for the day opposition members including from the congress and the dmk staged a walk down walk out against the suspension of the 12 rajya sabha members TRS members were in the well shouting slogans during the question hour. Speaker Ram Birla requested the agitating members not to indulge in sloganeering. Later he adjourned the house till 2 p.m. When the house reassembled at 2 p.m., TRS members resorted to sloganeering in the well seeking a bill on MSP and a uniform food grains procurement policy. A Raja who was on the chair asked the members to go back to their seats and raise the issue. However as the snogleering continued he adjourned the house for an hour till 3 pm 
There has been no improvement in the situation at 3 p.m. also, with the TRS members shouting slogans by standing in the well. However, amid the continuing din, two bills were introduced. They included the High Court and Supreme Court Judges' Salaries and Conditions of Service Amendment Bill 2021, which was moved by Law Minister Kiran Rijiju, and the Assisted Reproductive Technology Regulation Bill 2020 by Health Minister Dr. Mansur Mandavia. Speaker Om Birla's repeated appeal to the agitating members to maintain calm and to go to their seats from the well were not heeded. At one point of time, the TRS member Nageswar Rao went to his seat and spoke briefly seeking a statement from the government on the demands. However, as it then continued, Speaker Om Birla adjourned the House for the day. Meanwhile, in the Rajya Sabha, Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu rejected the appeal of Leader of Opposition, Malikarjan Karge's demand to revoke the suspension of 12 MPs of the House. The Rajya Sabha is a continuing institution. Chairman can take action and also the House can take action. You try to mislead the House, you disturb the House, you ransack the table and you also throw the papers on the chair and also some of them gone down to the table. So then you are giving me lessons. So this is not the way. It was the motion was moved, it was approved, action is taken, it is final. Mr. Naidu said the action has been taken by the House and not by him. He said the erring members have not expressed remorse for their behaviour and action taken in this regard is final. After that, the members from the opposition parties, including Congress, AAP and RJD, started sloganeering. Later, the opposition members, including from Congress, the DMK, AAP and RJD, staged a walkout. Post-lunch, when the House reassembled, the Leader of the House and Union Minister Piyush Goyal made a statement regarding the suspension of 12 members. He said, by their unruly behaviour, the MPs have denigrated the image of the House, which the country has washed on 11th August in the Rajya Sabha. He added that the decision on the suspension has been taken by the House, considering the evidence at hand. The House is a continuing institution. And the House has been able to do this work and then say that the session is over. Now there is no way to do any work. This is not a matter of fact. And it will be increased in the country's country. That's why we had to do this work. That's why we had to do this work. That's why we had to do this work. And the members who had to do this work, who had to do this work, ये सब हरकत की थी क्योंकि वो आखिरी दिन की हरकत थी तो नया जब कमीन हुआ सेशन पहले दिन हमने ये एक्शन लेने का प्रस्ताव रखा और ये प्रस्ताव इस सदन में पारित किया मिस्टर गोयल डिमांडेड दैट द सस्पेंडेड एमपी शुड अपॉलोजाइज टू द नेशन एंड द हाउस एडिंग इफ दे डू द गवर्नमेंट इज रेडी टू कंसीडर द रिवोकेशन ऑफ दिस सस्पेंशन he also suggested that an all-party meeting can be convened or even a discussion in the House can be held to discuss the better functioning of the House proceedings so that such incidents do not recur in future. Deputy Chairman of the Rajya Sabha, Harivansh, also reiterated the Leader of the House and the Leader of the Opposition and the members should meet to resolve the issue. Union Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, Pranlad Joshi, said that the government never intended to run the House in the absence of opposition. He said the government is open to constructive criticism from the opposition. He said as the opposition has opted to boycott the proceedings for today, the dam safety bill listed for consideration and passing today may be taken up tomorrow in the presence of opposition members. After that, the deputy chairman adjourned the House for the day. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia has said no case of Omicron, the new COVID variant, has been reported in any part of the country. In reply to a question, the Rajya Sabha, Mr. Mandavia said that so far the new variant has been reported in 14 countries. He informed that all precautionary measures have been taken to prevent the virus from entering into India. The Health Minister informed the House that although the COVID situation in the country is under control, the threat of the virus is still prevailing. He also reiterated the Prime Minister's appeal of following COVID-appropriate behaviour to check the spread of COVID-19. Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan today chaired a review meeting on Omicron variant of COVID-19 with states through video conferencing. The Omicron variant does not escape RT-PCR and RAT tests. During the meeting, Mr. Bhushan said Har Ghar Dasta campaign for the door-to-door vaccination will be continued till the 31st of December with a focus on 100% COVID-19 vaccine first dose coverage. He said the focus will also be on completing the backlog of the second dose of vaccine. Mr. Bhushan advised the states to ramp up testing for early identification of positive cases 
and early management. In view of reporting of Omicron, the new variant of COVID-19, the Union Health Ministry has revised guidelines for international arrivals in India to be effective from tomorrow. The ministry has mandated submitting 14 days travel details, uploading negative RT-PCR test report on Air Suvida portal before the journey. The RT-PCR test should have been conducted within 72 hours prior to undertaking the journey. Home Ministry has extended the COVID-19 guidelines issued under the Disaster Management Act till the 31st of December. In an order, the Ministry asked the state's annuities to go for rigorous screening and testing of all international arrivals. It said these international travellers must also be closely tracked and tested as per Health Ministry's guidelines and the samples of travellers turning positive are sent to the designated Indian SARS-CoV-2 Genomics Consortium INSA COG Genome Sequencing Laboratories promptly as per the INSA COG guidance document. The Ministry said state surveillance officers must establish a close coordination with the designated or tagged genome sequencing laboratories for expediting the results of the genomic analysis and the state's annuities should immediately undertake necessary public health measures in case presence of variants of concern or variants of interest. 123 crore 27 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. The recovery rate is currently at 98.35%, which is highest since March last year. There has been a total of 10,116 recoveries in the last 24 hours. 6,990 new cases have been reported in the last 24 hours. India's active caseload now stands at 1 lakh 543. Active cases account for less than 1% of total cases. Speaking to All India Radio, Dr. N.K. Arora, Chairman COVID Task Force, gave information about new Omicron variant and possible infections. The whole world is really worried with new COVID variant Omicron. And this is a new variant where almost 60 to 70 mutations have occurred in one virus. And this variant has first been described from South Africa, but over a matter of days, this has spread to almost 20 countries across the world. It is considered to be more infectious, but the information is still scanty. The WHO has announced this as to be a variant of concern. That means the countries and the communities have to be worried about it and take preventive steps. In our bilingual live phone in program, Corona Jagrukta series, Dr. Alok Thakkar, HOD, ENT, Ames, New Delhi will be with us today to answer the queries related to coronavirus. This live program can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. Listeners can ask questions to the experts from 9.30 p.m. on toll-free number 1-800-115767 and on telephone number 011-2331-4444. You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag AskAIR. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.nic.in and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. Canada will allow entry to persons who have been vaccinated with Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine vaccine against coronavirus disease COVID-19 from today. The approval of the Hyderabad-based company's vaccine was given on the 19th of this month. Fully vaccinated individuals with right of entry to Canada who depart and re-enter the country within 72 hours of leaving Canada will not have to present a pre-entry molecular test. New mask mandates and other measures aimed at curbing the spread of the Omicron coronavirus variant came into force in England today. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is eyeing an expanded booster program to help increase protection against COVID-19. Face masks are compulsory on transport in shops, banks and hair salons. All international travellers must take a PCR test by the end of the second day after they arrive and self-isolate until they get their result. That is in addition to restrictions on arrivals from 10 southern African countries who have to enter hotel quarantine. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts.
Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmark Gold Jewelry for any consumer-related complaints. Please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404. Issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. Jago Grahak Jago. Now here is the review of the proceedings in Parliament today. First from Rajya Sabha, writer is Rajesh Ahuja, UNI. The proceedings of the Rajya Sabha on the second day of the winter session was stormy with the members of various opposition parties protesting the suspension of 12 of the members over the unruly scenes on the last day of the monsoon session. After the laying of papers, leader of the opposition, the Rajya Sabha, Malikarjun Kharge, raising the matter as a point of order, said that the suspension of 12 opposition MPs is a gross violation of rules. Mr. Karge said a motion to suspend a member can be moved only on the day of the disorderly conduct. He said the members must be named as per the rules of procedures before moving the motion, which he said was not done yesterday. Mr. Karge urged the chairman to revoke the suspension of the opposition MPs. Ruling on the issue, Chairman M. Venkai Naidu said that the action taken yesterday is final and he is not reconsidering it. You disturb the House. The action is done. The decision is final. I am not reconsidering it, the chairman said. Dissatisfied of the ruling of the chairman, the opposition members entered the well to protest. Amid the opposition uproar, the chairman called for members to raise the zero-hour mentions. G.K. Vasan from Tamil Manila Congress and K.C. Ramamurthy from the BJP raised the issue of the destruction caused by rains in Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Vijay Sai, Sai Reddy from YSR Congress raised the issue of floods in Andhra Pradesh. He said it is imperative that the Union Government provide a relief package of 1,000 crore rupees to Andhra Pradesh. Later, members of the Congress, DMK, RJD, the Left and the Aam Admi Party staged a walkout in protest against the rejection of the request to revoke the suspension of 12 MPs. Later, CM Ra Ramesh of the BJP also raised the issue of floods in Andhra Pradesh. The chairman hoped that the government will take note of the situation in the flood-affected states. Luis Zeno Falerio of the All India Trinamul Congress said that the government has taken up projects that have destroyed the environment. He said the transportation of 13 million tons of coal through Karnataka, expansion of the National Highway and other projects undertaken by the government that are meant to transport coal to the hinterland is destroying the ecological balance of Goa. Meanwhile, Derek O'Brien of the All India Trinamul Congress said that the 12 opposition members should not have been suspended. He said during the entire monsoon session, the opposition was compelled to do what they did because certain issues were not brought up. He said the Trinamool Congress MPs are also walking out in protest. Subhash Chandra Singh of the BJD raised the issue of the meagre salaries of Anganwari workers despite the increasing workload due to COVID. Nominated member... Narendra Jadav expressed concern of the new COVID-19 virus variant called Omicron. He said this has renewed the fears of a third wave of the pandemic. After the zero hour, the House took up special mentions. Vishambar Prasad Nishad of the Samajwadi Party raised concern over the discontinuation of the old pension scheme. Seema Divedi of the BJP expressed concern of the situation arising out of the strike by junior doctors in Uttar Pradesh. Mahesh Puddar of the BJP raised the issue of danger to environment by dumping of fly ash. After special mentions, Chairman M. Venkai Naidu, referring to the issue raised by the opposition in the morning, said that a day after the unruly scenes in the House on August 11, 2021, he had read a statement expressing concern on the behaviour of the members. He also noted that the members were named on the same day. The chairman said a majority of the House wants the Parliament to run smoothly, adding only a few become violent. The chairman said that there have been instances when actions were taken against members of the House. In this context, he referred to the action taken against several members during the bifurcation of Andhra Pradesh. After the statement by the chairman, 
D.R. Patnaik of the BJT expressed concern over the pressure on rural jobs. Even though economic recovery is taking shape, the pressure on rural jobs and on the Mandrega jobs has increased. We have seen it in Odisha, he said. During the question hour, Health Minister Mansook Mandavir, responding to the questions regarding the precautions taken by the government in light of the Omicron variant of the COVID virus, said that no case relating to the new variant has been reported in India. The ministry is doing genome sequencing, he said, adding that 70 to 80 lakh people are being vaccinated in the country every day. In reply to another question, the minister said that the government plans to come up with a dengue vaccine soon. He said consultations are being held with experts in this regard. Responding to another question on the efficiency of tuberculosis testing in the country, the minister said the government wants to eradicate TB by 2025. He informed that an Indian company is working on making a vaccine for tuberculosis. First three trials have been already been completed, he said. On questions on the need to regulate cryptocurrency, Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman said a bill in this regard will be brought soon. The minister said that people investing in cryptocurrency have been advised to exercise caution with the unregulated currency. In reply to another question, the minister said that the government has put in place schemes to encourage manufacturers of medical equipment. After the question hour, the House was adjourned till 1400 hours. When the House reassembled, the leader of the House, Piyush Goyal, referring to the statement by leader of the opposition, Malikarjun Karge, in the House in the morning and the opposition walk out against the decision to suspend 12 opposition MPs, said that the behavior of the opposition was unfortunate. Defending the decision of the chair, Mr. Goyal said the behavior of the opposition members on the last day of the monsoon session was highly condemnable. Referring to the events of the August 11, Mr. Goyal said, the airing members misbehaved with the staff of the House. He said the decision on their suspension could be revoked if they expressed regret for their behavior. The whole House would like the MPs to return. They should apologize for their behavior on August 11. They should apologize to the House, the Chair and the country, Mr. Goyal said. Deputy Chairman Harivan said he would like to reiterate what the Chairman has said. He suggested that the Leader of the Opposition and the Leader of the House should discuss the issue and added that the House was ready to reconsider the suspension of the MPs. Thereafter, Union Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhavat was asked to move the dam safety bill for consideration of the House. Just as Mr. Shekhavat was about to move the bill for consideration, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi said the government is open to constructive criticism and would like to run the House with opposition support. He suggested that since the opposition has boycotted the House for a single day today, the dam safety bill could be taken up tomorrow in their presence. We are open to constructive criticism. Our party is the most democratic party in the country. Our leader is also very democratic. The opposition has boycotted for a day so we can take up the dam safety bill tomorrow, Mr. Josie said, thereafter the chair adjourned the house for the day. And now a review of the proceedings of the Lok Sabha. Writer is Kumar Rakesh of the PTI. The Lok Sabha proceedings were disrupted for the second straight day today amid opposition protests over various issues. TRS members shouting slogans, displaying placards by standing in the well of the house while other opposition members, including from the Congress and the left, sought to raise certain issues from the seats. The members from the Congress, the NCP, left parties and the DMK staged a walkout from the house alleging that the government was muzzling the voice of the opposition. However, a division in the opposition ranks was also visible as Trinamul Congress members neither joined the protest nor walked out. Soon after, new member took oath and the first question of the question hour was taken up. Members of the TRS trooped into well, demanding a law on minimum support price MSP as well as compensation for the families of farmers who lost their lives during the agitation against the farm laws. Appealing to the members to go back to the seat, Speaker Om Birla said, the questioner to be taken up first, adding, their conduct was not sending out the right message. A visibly anguished Mr. Birla said that important questions were being raised, but the proceedings were being disrupted. It is not right, the Speaker repeatedly said, but as the Dean continued, he adjourned the proceedings initially to 2 p.m. Earlier, Shiv Sena's Delkar Kalaban Mohan Bhai, representing Dadra and Nagar Haveli constituency to court. As the House reconvened at 2 p.m., there were protests from the members of the opposition. In less than two minutes, A. Raja, who was chairing the proceedings, adjourned the House till 3 p.m. 
The Speaker tried to break the deadlock by holding meeting with the leaders of different parties. There has been no improvement in the situation at 3 p.m. also, with the TRS members shouting slogans by standing in the well. However, amid the continuing din, two bills were introduced. They included the High Court and Supreme Court judges, Salaries and Conditions of Service Amendment Bill 2021, which was moved by the Law Minister Kiran Rijiju, and the Assisted Reproductive Technology Regulation Bill 2020 by Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia. Later, the Speaker adjourned the House for the day. That's all in Parliament Review. External Affairs Ministry today summoned Pakistani Shah's Affairs to convey deep concern at the incident of desecration of the sanctity of Gurdwara, Shidarbar Sahib in Kartarpur by a Pakistani model and a clothing brand. In response to media queries on the incident, Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakshi said it was conveyed that this reprehensible incident has deeply hurt the sentiments of the Sikh community in India and worldwide. Noted poet, Telugu film lyricist, Siruvenala Sita Rama Sastri passed away this evening with lung cancer related complications at a private hospital in Hyderabad. He was 66. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed grief on the demise of Siruvenala Sita Rama Sastri. Argentina football player Lionel Messi won the men Ballon de Dor for a record seven time and Barcelona's Alexia Boteas won the women's Ballon d'Or on Tuesday. The 34-year-old Messi led Argentina to Copa America title in July after losing in four major international finals. The 27-year-old midfielder Puteas won the World Award for the first time after helping Barca win the treble and scored 26 goals in 42 games overall. She netted in the Champions League final against Chelsea and in August she was named UEFA Women's Player of the Year. In FIH Junior World Cup Hockey, all last eight engagements will be held tomorrow at Kalinga Stadium in Bhubaneswar. Germany will clash with Spain at 10.30 a.m. in the first quarterfinals, while the Netherlands will take on Argentina at 1.30 p.m. France will face Malaysia and in the quarterfinals at 4.30 p.m. And in the fourth quarterfinal match, India will take on Belgium at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. All India Radio will broadcast the commentary live on the quarter-final match of AFIH Junior World Cup Hockey between India and Belgium from 7.25 p.m. to 8.55 p.m. or till the end of the match. It will also be available with RN Support DLC 1-0. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. India's GDP grows at 8.4% in the second quarter of the current fiscal Lok Sabha witnesses introduction of two bills amid din before being adjourned for the day after repeated disruptions. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkainaidu rejects opposition leader Malikarjun Karge's appeal for revocation of suspension of 12 MPs. No case of new COVID variant Omicron reported in any part of the country, says Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavya in the Rajya Sabha. Revised guidelines for international arrivals in India in view of the new Omicron variant to be effective from tomorrow. Argentina's football player Lionel Messi wins men's Ballon d'Or for the record seventh time. Barcelona's Alexia Puteas backs women's Ballon d'Or. And in FIA Junior World Cup Hockey, all quarterfinals to be held tomorrow at the Kalinga Stadium in Bhubaneswar. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night. <laughs>